Johnny Dollar. Dollar, this is Frank Francis at Tri Western Life in Los Angeles. Well, I am. How soon do you think you can get on out here? Well, it's early evening here in the east. Sometime tomorrow morning be all right? Well, I suppose it'll have to be. But unless you can get here before noon, there may be no point in your coming at all. Noon, your time. Yeah. Well, it's easy. There's a jet flight out of New York around 8 a.m. Eastern time. It'll get me to L.A. International around 11 your time. Good, good. I'll uh, meet you at the airport. Uh, what seems to be the trouble, Mr. Francis? The recent death of one of our policyholders, Dollar. I hope you'll be able to find out for us if it was accidental or suicide. Oh? Or possibly even murder. Murder? Yes. Okay. CBS Radio brings you Bob Reddick in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-Western Life Insurance Company, Los Angeles office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Simple Simon matter. Expense account item one, early the next morning. $180.40 plane fare. The usual prevailing westerly winds didn't prevail, so the flight was even faster than scheduled. And the big jet set down at the L.A. International Airport well before 11 a.m., Pacific time, that is. True to his word, Frank Francis was there and waiting for me. Right over here, Dollar. Hmm? Oh, okay, Frank. Excuse me, please. Will you excuse me, please? If you have any heavy luggage waiting to be taken off the plane, I'm afraid we'd better pick it up later. Uh, everything I own is in this kind of glorified briefcase. Good, good. Because we have to be sure that we're back in my office before noon. Come on. My car's out here at the curb. All right. But uh, why is the time element so important? Because of a phone call I'm expecting. For you. Get in, Johnny. Phone call for me? Yeah. Come on, get in, huh? From whom? Right. I'll tell you all about it on the way in. All right, whatever you say. Well? Johnny, at the uh, present moment, the death of Jerry Hilton. Gerald Raymond Hilton, to be more exact, is on the books as accidental or possible suicide. And you wrote his insurance? For some $16,000. Straight life with double indemnity in case of accidental death. And the beneficiary? His wife. Go on, Frank. It happened about a week ago on a side road. Or rather, off a side road in the vicinity of Newhall. Where is Newhall? About 35 miles north of here. Two or 3,000 people, some farmland, a bunch of oil wells. Go on. Hilton was apparently driving around a bad curve on the side of a hill. Narrow, dusty little dirt road. He apparently lost control and went over into a rather deep canyon full of big rocks. There wasn't too much left of his car, and apparently Hilton died immediately. So it looked like an accident? Apparently. And that's the fourth time now, you know, that you've used that word, apparently. Deliberately, Johnny. Why? There isn't much of a police force out that way, but believe me, they're on their toes. Now, those boys went over the scene of that so-called accident with a fine-tooth comb. What did they find, Frank? They found that Hilton's car had stopped there on that curve. Or maybe been stopped is a better term. Why do you say that? Because of a phone call I got yesterday, the one we're expecting at noon. A phone call? Yeah. <laughs> Frank, that bush that you're beating around is getting kind of big. I know. Well, okay. The tire tracks showed that Hilton's car had stopped and then, not skidded, but had been driven slowly over the edge. Mm hmm. Now, about that phone call. Well, couple that with the fact that he was half crazy with financial troubles. He'd already borrowed a couple of thousand on his insurance. And the fact that his wife, and believe me, he was devoted to her, that his wife has been sick 
and yet still trying to work in some factory to keep him in food and clothing, and, well, it pretty clearly indicated suicide made to look like an accident. Do the police agree on that? All the way. Hilton's been a complete failure. He had nothing except a shady reputation. The only thing left to give to his wife to keep her alive was the insurance. Needless to say, with her three-year-old kid, I forgot to mention him, with the kid needing an operation for something or other immediately, she's already put in a claim. But if it was suicide, she can't collect. Exactly. Which I suppose is just what you'd like. No. Oh? No, Johnny. I've known about Marjorie Hilton a long time, ever since high school. I think she really tried to make a go of that marriage to Jerry, despite his failure to support her and his, uh, well, his rather questionable record. You mean he had a police record? Not actually, but I'm sure he deserved one. I see. Now, Frank, tell me this. On the phone last night, you said it could possibly even be murder. Because of the call I just received. From whom? Somebody who wouldn't identify himself. Himself? Yes. He was quite definite, and he said just two things. That because of what he knew, we'd better get ready to pay off the insurance. And second? That he wouldn't give his information to anybody but you. I wonder why. He wouldn't say. He only said to get you out here right away. That he'd call the day at noon and talk, but only to you. Now let's get into your office and wait for that call. Frank, because according to my watch, it's nearly ten minutes after... After three? You forgot to reset it on the way out here. Oh, yeah. But you may be right at that, Johnny. Maybe it was just some practical joker, maybe some crank. You'd be surprised at the... No you pick it up. I'll take it on this extension here. Right. Hello? I have a person-to-person -person call for Mr. Johnny Dollar. Yeah, from where, operator? San Diego. Well, I'm Johnny Dollar. Thank you. One moment, please. Go ahead, please. Hello? Hello? Uh, Dollar? That's right. Yeah, I recognize your voice. Who are you? Listen, Dollar, that Jerry Hilton wasn't no accident. Wasn't it? It wasn't no suicide, neither. Jerry was murdered. I know who done it. Well, now, unless you tell me who you it are... make no difference. Not yet. But when you meet me tonight, so as I can tell you what I know... I'll meet you where? On the Tascadero Pier, down here in Dago. Tascadero? Yeah, Tascadero, out on the end of the pier at the cargo hoist. Now listen, I'd like... Be there alone, see? At 11 o'clock tonight. Is this a gag or some kind of a trick? No trick, Tyler. You want to know who knocked off Jerry Hilton, don't you? Well, of course, but who are you? Maybe you'll recognize me. Now, wait a minute. I'll see you tonight. Hello? Hello? Well, Frank. Well, Johnny. There are many who hold blindly that all is perfect with these United States. But former President Eisenhower did not believe this. He formed a nonpartisan commission to look into our national ways and to set forth, after thorough examination, a list of national goals the kind of America we can be in the future, the impression we make on the rest of the world. Our national image depends on how fully the nation follows the recommendations of this nonpartisan commission. The complete report has been made up into a booklet, which is yours free if you want it. CBS Radio and its affiliated stations believe this to be an important national statement. We hope you'll send for it. Simply send your name and address on a postcard to Goals, Box 1776, New York 17, New York. You mean you're going to keep this date with that, that anonymous phone caller? I wouldn't. The police think Hilton was a suicide. No. Which would save your company a lot of money. No. Not a lot as life insurance policies go. And I'd much prefer to see it paid out to his widow. 
But of course, if it was suicide... You know that voice on the phone? You know something, Frank? It had a familiar sound. Sounded like some thug to me, Johnny. And if so... But I can't place it. Anyhow, he said it was murder. There's only one thing for me to do, and that's keep that date with him. Johnny. Yeah? Johnny, don't you see? You may be walking into some kind of a trap. Why? Who wants to trap me? Over what? A man in a job like yours has enemies. Bound to have. This could be very dangerous. Dangerous? You mean like crossing a busy street intersection? Oh, now, listen. Or driving around in some of today's traffic? I don't kid about this. Who's kidding? If you go down there tonight and out on that pier to meet him, well, believe me, you'd better have some police protection. And scare him away? No, he said to meet him alone. Even oh, so. forget it. Forget it, Frank. I'll be okay. I certainly hope so. So do I. Expense account item two, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car. Before driving the 130 miles of freeway down to San Diego, though, I got her address from Frank and paid a visit to Jerry Hilton's widow, Marjorie. As she was small, thin, about 23 or 24, pretty in her own way, but with far too many lines of care in her face for one of her age. The second floor apartment was tiny and badly furnished. My little boy Tommy lay on a small cot in the corner of the bedroom, and he was a mighty sick-looking kid. However, she told me a free clinic had agreed to do the rather serious intestinal operation that was needed. I wondered why she hadn't thought of a clinic before. And when I get the insurance money, I guess I'd better pay him for it, hadn't I, Mr. Dollar? Well, I hope you do get it, Mrs. Hilton. Oh, now, look, Jerry wouldn't ever have committed suicide, no matter how far down his luck was. Not even in the hope that it wouldn't be found out you'd be able to collect the insurance money? Was there anything else that he could do to get you away from having to live like this? Oh, listen, he tried, Mr. Dollar. He tried all the time. Do you think it was his fault he couldn't make a living? Doing what? Well? I, I don't know. I, I don't know how Jerry got that money that he had when him and me got married last year. You but... don't know how your own husband... Last year, then little Tommy isn't his child? Oh, no, sir. Oh, but Jerry treated him just like he was. He'd do anything he could for him, just anything, for the both of us. Oh, sure, I can see that. What does that mean? Nothing, nothing. Do you know of any enemies that Jerry might have had? Oh, I don't even know who his friends were, Mr. Dollar. There was just Jerry and me and Tommy. Oh, and he treated us good. Well, until he ran out of money. But he was sure something was going to turn up pretty soon, and... Something legitimate? You mean you think that Jerry could ever do anything crooked? Do you? But then you don't seem to have known very much about him. Well, all I know is he was good to me. He was good to the both of us. He was a lot better than that punk. I mean, than Tommy's real father was. What was his name? What if he did give me a lot of fancy clothes and jewels and things? Well, he wasn't the first one. Now that Jerry's gone, I can have those kind of things again. Who was he, Margie? His name was Allie Parsons. When Tommy was born, he walked out on me. Alfred H. Parsons. And the H stands for heroin. You're talking about a man the narcotic squad has been after for the past five years. Oh, well, all I know he was always hiding away from somebody or something. When he come around and tried to see me again a couple of weeks ago, well, Jerry threw him out. He came to see you, huh? Yeah. All this soft talk about doing something for Jerry and me and the kid. Well, Jerry didn't believe it. Oh, Allie was awful good at that soft talk and the promises. Even, even to getting me back with him time after time when I was married to him. I'm wise to him now. I told Jerry and he threw him out. A couple of weeks ago. Yes. Has Allie been back since Jerry dined? Well, why should he? Well, you look a little pale and worn and tired. Maybe even a little hungry, Mrs. Hilton. But you're a very attractive girl, nonetheless. What? Well, thanks. Thanks very much. Now, I've got to meet that man in San Diego. Oh, um, here. This is just in case Tommy needs something extra while he's in the hospital. Oh, Fifty dollars? I think the insurance company would okay this sort of an advance. Well, I thought you were trying to tell me they wouldn't pay. 
Well, maybe I've changed my mind. But there was something about Marjorie Hilton that puzzled me. In spite of the way she talked. Or maybe because of it. Somehow she made me think of the typical movie gun mall who'd play along with anybody she thought was on the way up. I drove down to San Diego. And while it was still daylight, I got a line on the Tascadero Pier. It was one of the older ones, some distance below the main part of that busy port. There were no ships tied up to it, nothing but trash and the long warehouse built up on it. All in all, it was in pretty bad shape, probably in line for condemnation by the progressive city of San Diego. I hoped there'd be plenty of light on it when it came time for my meeting out there on the end of it. Speaking of time, I killed a couple of hours in a movie and then had dinner in the grill room at the U.S. Grant, took in another movie, and it all adds up to item three, $12 and a half. And by then, it was nearly 11 p.m. There was no moon. Or if there was, you couldn't see it because of the heavy fog that had settled down over the waterfront. No white kid about it. I wondered if I wasn't being a little foolish in plotting the length of that abandoned pier in the darkness to keep a rendezvous with... With what? Even if the pier had been well lighted, I wouldn't have been able to see more than 20 or 30 feet ahead of me. I found myself walking softly, listening for... Well, perhaps for the footsteps of somebody else. But who? I didn't even know the name of the man I was supposed to meet out there, much less what he was really up to. Sure, I had the old 38 handy, but in that darkness, in that fog... Now, uh... Hmm? Now, over here. Come on, but quiet, see? Yeah, sure. Here beside this big box where nobody can see us. See us? Are you kidding in this pea super? That's it. Now, listen, I've got to talk fast. Simon. Yeah, yeah. Simon Hacker, simple Simon. Uh, that's right, but not too simple to look out for myself. So now, listen. You're the punk I chased halfway across the state of Kansas once and then had to let go because you didn't have what I was after. Only you didn't really have to let me go. You could have nailed me. Yes, and you're the punk who couldn't or wouldn't tell the cops where they could lay their hands on Ali Parsons. All right, so now I do know where he is. So could I go to the cops? Sure. Why, you think they'd believe me now? You think they wouldn't just lock me up for life? Darn fool, they'd do anything for you to get information on Parsons. Yeah, but you think Ali wouldn't find out if I did. You think he wouldn't kill me for it? Like he knocked off Jerry Hilton, maybe? Well, did he, Simon? Listen, I know that you'll protect me. You're the only dick that ever give me a break. Simon? Well, when you nail him, Ali Parsons, for what I'm telling you, maybe you could get me off at a hook with the cops. Maybe. So listen. Up at New Hall, they knew that was no accident, Jerry's car going off that cave. And maybe they don't say it, but maybe they know that Jerry was dead before that car went over. You're telling me that Allie killed him? Don't you see? Allie wanted his girl back, that Margie that was married to Jerry. Can you prove that Allie murdered him? All the proof you need, Zala. Good, good. Now here, Simon, knowing how you work, maybe 50... Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe a hundred. Okay. Here. Thanks, Dollar. You're okay. So listen, while I tell you how I know he killed Jerry Hilton. Yeah. Ah! Simon! Those last three shots from somewhere in the foggy darkness of the pier that meant for me. I dove in over the edge and then slowly, quietly swam in among the pilings back to the shore. Soaking wet, I piled into my car and drove to the headquarters of the harbor police. And they immediately sent out a couple of men to look for Simon Hacker, or what was left of him, and gave the regular police an alert on Allie Parsons. They also helped me dry out my clothes. Well, that gave me time to think. Marjorie Hilton was my only real lead to Jerry's killer now. Obviously the same one who blasted away at Simon and me there on the pier. Obviously Allie Parsons or one of his mob. And Allie was again making a play for Margie. Maybe she had gone to high school, but she wasn't very bright. And if what she told me was true about the clothes and the jewels he'd given her, about always going back to him before Jerry came along, well, in spite of what she'd said about Allie, she'd probably be a pushover for him again. 
I thanked the harbor police, I got into my car, and I tore on back to L.A. to her apartment. It was nearly 4 a.m., but she had a light on. Because of the sick youngster? Maybe. Mrs. Hilton? Who is it? It's Johnny Dollar. Oh, uh, uh, just a second. I saw the light on. Well, now, what does all this mean? Well, 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 I told you when you were here before, I'm taking little Tommy to the hospital for, for his operation today. You got enough bags packed here for you and Tommy? All right, Margie, what goes? I told you. Yeah, you told me. You also told me a lot of things this afternoon, maybe enough to make me suspicious. I don't know what you're talking about. You were pretty emphatic about how good Jerry had been to you. So much so, it began to sound like an act. You didn't really expect me to believe that you had no idea where Jerry would got his money. Or Allie Parsons when you were married to him. Well, how should I know what they did? And I wouldn't be surprised if there were three or four other husbands before them also in the rackets. But there were only two before... Oh. Only two before. Now, you listen, Mr. Dollar. Why did Allie Parsons kill Jerry? To get you back because he was afraid that Jerry might tip off the police to his latest activities in narcotics? He did kill him, didn't he? Well, you're nuts. The same as he tried to kill or maybe did kill Simon Hackett tonight down in San Diego where you knew I was going. I... So you tipped off Allie Parsons and now you're set to go somewhere and meet him. Yeah? Well, I don't have to. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Allie! Allie, get me out of this! Allie! Don't reach for a dollar. Oh, that's real cute of you, Margie. Hello, Parsons. Just uh, keep him up real high. Then I'll take this gun of yours for myself. Hmm? Might come in real handy for me sometime with your prints all over it. Thanks. Pleasure, Allie. Now what? Now? Oh, now you face that wall there. And I'll put a bullet right in your head. You see, now that you know I killed Jerry, I've oh. got to get rid of you, too. Oh, oh now listen, oh, no, 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 no. Shut up, Margie. It's the only way. Of course, you know what the sound of a shot will bring, Parsons. With this nice old-fashioned silencer? Oh, <laughs> uh, but... Close the door to the hall anyway, will you, Margie? Oh, sure, Allie, but don't you think... Shut up and that... close the door. Okay, okay, whatever you say, only... Oh, no, you... Oh. Hold it, Parson. Simon! Watch out, Allie! Come! 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 Oh, uh, okay, boys, that's enough. That's right. enough. Okay, Lieutenant. Like the U.S. Marines, Lieutenant. Well, Dollar, when they hauled simple Simon here out of the drink and he told the boys what was going on... Wait a minute, wait a minute. How do you feel, Simon? Not so hot. I'll... I, 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 I guess I kind of waited too long to go straight. Uh, 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 easy, Simon, easy. Uh, but I tried, Dollar. Uh, I tried. <laughs> yeah, Simon. I'm afraid you did wait too long. But you tried. I want to take over, Lieutenant. Margie and the boy, I don't know. I kind of felt sorry for the poor kid, Tommy. But her, I can't help wondering if she even deserves a break. Expense account total, including the trip back to Hartford, we'll call it $450 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here is our star to tell you about next week's story. For next week, a most ingenious method of blackmail. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Reddick, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in our cast were Jackson Beck as Frank Francis, Elizabeth Lawrence as Marjorie, Mason Adams as Simple Simon, Bernard Grant as Allie Parsons, and Maurice Tarplin as the police lieutenant. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hanna speaking. Alan Jackson's informative feature, Information Central, weekdays on the CBS radio network.